My name is Adrian Nanchev and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification right next to it for the latest uploads. Now what makes entrepreneurs different from other people? It's worth understanding that entrepreneurs are always seeking to improve themselves, always seeking to learn more things, always seeking to do more and become more and be more. The way I see it is to argue against yourself better than the competition or opposition can argue against you. If you want to take a stance on something, no matter what that may be, you want to be able to argue for it and against it, having a very balanced mindset towards everything. And this is what entrepreneurs, uh, this is one, one difference that entrepreneurs have with the people where they, they all want to know the good and the bad and the ugly of everything they stand for and everything they believe in, because that helps to discover an, as much as possible whether it will work or what they're missing, or what they don't know, or what they're overlooking, or what they are misunderstanding. They have a very balanced approach, they need to know as much as they can, and learn more, and learn more, and learn more, so as to always change, and change their strategy, and always to learn more, to become more, and do more, and be more. Recently, I've heard of this, um, this kind of like psychological phenomena called the einstein lung effect. And the einstein lung effect says that once, essentially, once we're stuck on a certain kind of like strategy of doing things, like here's a new business idea, okay, A, B, C is what we're going to do. Here's another business idea, okay, A, B, C is what we're going to do. The same strategy, the same technique, the same, the same procedure almost. Um, when we get stuck in that kind of behavior, that is quite limiting and that's not as creative as we could be. So to avoid and negate the Einstein effect, we want to keep learning and taking new ideas and new knowledge and concepts and all the rest. I've got different books here that I've read, and I'm writing a book on marketing and inbound marketing at the moment. So it's all about learning new things and pushing new ideas into their head, so as to then say, hmm, or don't forget this, or don't forget that, or alert this new idea, and that changes the entire strategy. So entrepreneurs are naturally curious, always wanting to know more, always wanting, and because of that, they're always wanting to be more and become more and do more. And that's another difference as well. Entrepreneurs are willing to do what other people will not do. So in the future, entrepreneurs can live the life other people cannot live. Meaning that we are willing to get up early and do work more or less throughout the day because we know that in the long term we can benefit more from that. I call it doing the work once and getting paid forever. I'm creating this, this, vid this video once, uploading it once, sending it out and sharing it once and then I'm benefiting from it in one way or another profiting SEO or traffic or whatever forever. I started a podcast lately I'm interviewing people and uh, throughout the day yesterday I interviewed two people I used to interview four people a day that was quite a lot to ask for and then it's like well not everyone will dare not everyone wants to do this but because of that I'm doing this I'm now getting more benefits I'm getting more people know me it's not what you know it's not who you know it's who knows you. These two are fine, but who knows you is much more, much more profitable, much more leverageable and smart than who you know. Because you can know a lot of people, but if no one knows who you are, like, like random strangers for example, or people around the world, then it's like, well, you're missing out on a little bit extra, a little extra oomph. But more people that know you, because of the stuff that no one else is willing to do, then the better. As I said, I call it do the work once and get paid forever. And I use it as a I use it as a personal benchmark, thinking, if I were to do this or doing this building this business, what be, how can I do that once, do this once, set this up as a bench as a, as a minimum standard? How can I do this once and get paid forever? Or at the very least, how can I only have like one hour a month or one hour a week? Because as a side note, people say that passive income doesn't truly exist. They're wrong. What they, you, know, you, you can't be having a business and, drink, and living on the beach with a pina colada. You can, that's very true. From a practical sense, you can do that, you can achieve it. At a monetary sense, you know, Bitcoin or PayPal or whatever, or straight to your sort code and bank account, of course you can. The, the real trick is maintaining it. For example, I record all these videos in one, one great big bulk setting, which then frees up my time for the next month or so to do other things. And it's like, well... Um, I have all the I do all this work now that no one else is willing to do. It's seven, it's nearly eight o'clock in the morning. No one else is willing to do it. I, I do it all create create some loads of free time, upload it one one day at a time, 
and people aren't willing to do that and because I've done that, I, that, that frees up my time to do other things and that freeing up a time is what's important entrepreneurs also value their time because time is very important you can't get more time, you can only really manage yourself there are some tricks however to get 26 hours in a day but that's a, that's a video for another time but you have to value your time, not everyone values their time take your income, divide with hours, that kind of stuff and there's different metrics and different uh, formulas for it but the point is a lot of people in the world don't value their time and they're willing to just plod along doing something and just getting paid for it or they're, they're willing to do they they don't understand that they don't understand the the, that the time value that they have or that they put on their own time when you start to value your time you understand that you want to outsource do things faster much more efficient as I said I'm doing all this upfront now now because two or three days from now I'm just drip feeding out bit by bit and it's like it frees up so much more of my time. And that, and I use that time to do other cool things, other things that people will not do. As I said, I'm writing a book. Not everyone. Interesting little phenomenon here. As a, as a quick side note, again, loads of people have got you. Everyone's got a university degree. People have got PhDs, left, right, and centre. But how many authors do you know? How many authors do you know by name? Very few. I know six people at a stretch, two or three, comfortably, but six at a stretch. And it's like supply and demand. Everyone, everyone's got degrees, but how many authors are there in the world? Next to none. So again, entrepreneurs are willing to do the work people will not do. So in the future, they can live the life other people cannot live. So I'm writing a book, and I tell people, write, write a book, write a book, write a book. No. So, great, okay. And then I write a book, and I get the SEO, I get the attention, I get the respect. That, you know, I, I, I know I deserve it, but I have to show the world that I deserve that respect and that attention once you've written the book and because of that other people did not write a book they're not going to get it because you know whatever they're not doing the work that they're not they're not willing to do the work that other people are entrepreneurs are willing to do and that's a big barrier to entry which is a good good durable advantage as an entrepreneur other, other difference that makes other thing that makes entrepreneurs different is they understand the financial system they understand money they understand balance sheets they understand income statements profit and loss so on and so forth they understand the difference the real difference between uh, yeah, liabilities and assets. I was watching this um, this TV show very briefly recently. Uh, it was broadcast in the UK a few years ago, and there's a scene, the opening scene, and there's this couple arguing, and the main character is hidden away because because he, he, he's not he's not part of the family. He's a worker essentially, and the, and the TV show revolves around him. And this and this family, this couple are arguing. And it, between girlfriend and boyfriend, and the boyfriend says that he spent the money, their savings, and she's annoyed. And he then says that he spent it on, or she, she insinuates that it was spent on, he spent it on his surround sound system, this home cinema kind of setup. You know, we don't, we don't see it on the TV show, but it's a super big screen and big monitor and big speakers, whatever. And she's annoyed about that. And he says, quite interestingly now, it's an investment. That kind of stuff, what's it called consumer spending, is not an investment. That is a one big, big liability. Because an investment is an asset, essentially, and things that put money in your pocket. You spend money, you get a 5%, 3%, 8% return, depending on so many different factors, uh, and that puts money in your pocket. A damn, damn good two examples are property and stocks, and I think stocks are slightly more leveraged and slightly more powerful, because properties is a good hedge against inflation, but um, it grows really slow and in fact I think certain properties nominally speaking only keep up with inflation and they don't really beat it so there's some slight caveat to that while stocks the upside is potentially infinite because you buy one stock of a big company you're, you're leveraging everyone every logistics computer program the network the distribution everything if that increases performance by one percent that's massive growth all around but I'm, I'm getting a sidetrack slightly so they understand the difference between uh, unlike this fictional couple, what a, uh, what a, an investment, what an asset and a liability is. He's thinking a, a surround sound system, which is a home cinema, is an investment, when in fact in fact it's not. And any entrepreneur that's worth their weight in salt, or whatever the old saying, will realise that's, that's not an asset, that is a big liability, it's a big expense. And a lot of people don't get that. That's one big difference as well, between entrepreneurs and everyone else. 
they don't understand money. They don't understand that. I got some. I got some dollars in there, but they don't understand that it can be printed on will. And when people, well, with central bank essentially print money, it devalues every other note in existence. What's called inflation. And you know, we can do all sorts of research on this, the beast of Jekyll Island, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but there's a lot more to it than you realise, and it's in money is just d digital on a screen. And and on my podcast episode um, 38, uh, 36, I can't remember, well, 30, can't remember. I interviewed someone called Gregory Manorino, and, I, and he's talking about how the Federal Reserve in the state is increasing the balance sheet. You know, they're, they're doing some rather insidious things, and it's like it's irreversible, and it, it, it's going off a cliff. And it's like, and I asked him, well, can't you, can't they take that money? The notes and the coins and melt it or burn it or recycle it and it's like no because the way, the way it's all the way it's all working the way it all works against you and it's like fascinating unfortunate but, not, but unfortunate but fascinating and it's like you gotta be you gotta understand these things because this is our world this is this is the world you live in understand it to, to guard against it and protect yourself against it but also this is how it works he, here's the rules leverage those rules and use them to your advantage Use them to your benefit. But another interesting thing about entrepreneurs is don't complain. They don't really complain. They, they, they see things as they are, and it's like, okay, how can we use the situation to our advantage? Here, here's the situation. How can we leverage it? How can we use it to our advantage? Rather than moaning and, and groaning, mm, mm, miserable and all the rest. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like um, I was talking to someone about this last night, and there's a thing called root cause theory. Uh, which, um, you know, people will argue that oh, I'm fat because of the government or blah, blah, blah and all that. And it's like, well, let's look at, let's analyse let's analyze the situation by root cause theory. And let's say what decisions or actions that you made ultimately led to your con to the consequences you're now facing. So, for example, root cause theory will say that at 8 o'clock eight eight in the morning, I, I, I spent 30 seconds fastening my shoelace. Those thirty seconds had a knock-on effect. It meant that I missed a, it meant that I missed a green light. I then I then had to stop at a zebra crossing. So those two things compounded into like say two minutes, and those two minutes meant I had a bigger, slightly bigger than bigger queue than usual at the car park, which compounded to say five minutes. Which then, as I parked the car, I walked in and I just missed the train. So I, I was five or six minutes late to miss that train because of me choosing to fasten my shoelace that took 30 seconds whereas if I'd if I had just been a little bit quicker fastening shoelace or done it done it two minutes earlier all this would not have happened that's the root cause you gotta look at your decisions and, and look at them in, in sequence like mm, me doing this meant that this occurred it's the domino effect essentially me doing this meant that and that delayed me by this and this delayed me by here and there's all this compounding effect so the root cause is what your actions or, co or decisions that you've made that results in the, so in the consequences you're going to get now. And people don't understand this. This kind of goes in with the balance sheet and the money as well as the um, time value. They don't understand this. And when they don't understand it, they're quite oblivious to it. See, ignorance, isn't, ignorance, in, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is just ignorance. And when they don't understand this root cause thing, they're thinking, oh, I shouldn't have fastened my shoelace. Or... Now I can fasten my shoelace. I shouldn't have done it back then, or or maybe two minutes earlier instead. You know, something like that. Then the whole dynamic is shifted, and people don't understand this. They they think I'm 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 downtrodden. It's society's problem. It's the government's problem. Okay, there might be some legitimate grinds with them, but take a step back. You're you're unfortunate because you're choosing to spend your time and energy doing this thing or doing that thing or or doing this or doing that, not being productive, not learning. Not learning, not starting a business, not doing something interesting or or advancing yourself further, and that's that's a big loss of what a lot a big loss of human capital and a loss of potential. So it's like it's your own fault really for for, for a lot of the stuff. Yeah, there might be some intrinsic, you know, taxes for example. Yeah, we don't we don't control that, but you do control how you you don't control it or set the percentage for example. But you do control how you approach it. You do control how you, how you handle it, how you manage it. And that right there is is the root of your consequences. All the things that you control. Control them. Don't mess around with them. Don't don't leave them to risk. Don't leave them to chance. Sort them out. Leverage them. 
the world is, although it's dark at times, the world is got a lot of potential in it. The internet has changed a lot of things. Internet has changed a lot of things. Um, so those are some of the main differences between people, or between entrepreneurs and people. Entrepreneurs value their time, they learn, they have a very balanced approach to the world, they understand money, and they always they always seem to, they always ask themselves, you know, what can I do better? What am I missing? What, what am I not seeing here? What, you know, what's both sides of the argument? Or what's both sides of the uh, equation here, you know? There's always more to it, there's always more stones to be uncovered. So those are the main differences. Now, remember also that this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So go out there today and do something remarkable. But in the meantime, however, click on the subscribe button below and press the bell, bell notification right next to it for the latest, sub, for latest videos. How cool is that?